Ni Howdy is your favorite Asian and I'm back with another painting tutorial. This time we're going to be painting my Death Corps Creek Boarding Patrol. This army consists of 295 models, of which 244 are regular basic bitch infantry. The rest of the force includes light tanks, heavy tanks, armored transports, and super heavies. And for everyone asking me why there are no artillery, well, it's a boarding patrol and you obviously can't use artillery. So this tutorial will be, will be broken down into two parts. In this video, I will be painting the infantry and the next one will be all about the tanks. This series of videos will be a little bit different than the other painting tutorials. Instead of focusing on an exact process to paint a single figure, I will be going more into the theory and what it takes to paint, paint an army of this scale in a short period of time. I want these videos to work for you no matter what color scheme you have chosen for your army. Obviously with the amount of models I have, I'm not going to go for a golden demon paint job on every single model. Not that I could paint to golden demon level anyways, but I only have a limited amount of time to get these done and I'm going to take every shortcut possible and batch painting as much as I possibly can. I'm breaking this army down into three painting tiers. The big tanks will get the primo treatment since they're the highlight of the army. The smaller tanks will be painted kind of like the bigger tanks but with some more shortcuts and something to speed them up just to get them done faster. And then the infantry, they're, well, they're just going to be good enough. So on the infantrymen, I budgeted myself a paint time of 10 minutes per model. It doesn't sound like a lot, but the army has 244 infantry and at 10 minutes a model, that is 14,640 minutes or about 40 hours, which is an entire work week. The first thing we need to do before diving straight in and slapping paint on everything is to develop a paint scheme that is both efficient time-wise and looks good on the tabletop or in the display case. For this army, I did two test models for the infantry. The model on the left was painted first and is more in line with the traditional scheme that GW and Ford Fold use. I wanted the models to look more realistic and gritty to fit in the grim darkness of 40k. So I chose very desaturated and dark colors but unfortunately, the model ended up looking very bland. So from a distance, you can't really see all of the details on it and it just kind of looks like a blob. So for the second test model, I chose a lot brighter colors and different tones or hues that contrast with each other. Well, I don't really know how to explain the difference since I'm not very familiar with art vocabulary. In fact, I failed my basic art, art exams in both high school and college. If you ask me, I couldn't even draw a color wheel or name primary and secondary colors. But anyways, the second scheme looks good and I don't know why, so we're going to go with that. Time for some actual painting. For the first color, I chose a medium gray blue. I'm using Tamiya paints for this since they look more desaturated and more realistic than traditional miniature paints. This is applied with an airbrush and I like to thin down Tamiya using Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner. You'll notice that I'm spraying over existing paint and this is because I don't even follow my own advice and I did not finish a test model before I decided to airbrush three colors on over 200 models and figured out the scheme wasn't going to work. Anyways, don't worry about being too careful with this color, just make sure the entire uniform is covered. Next, I highlighted the fatigues with a lighter gray blue. This color is airbrushed at an angle from the top, similar to a zenithal highlight. You will want to leave a lot of the last color so that after the weather, you can still see a slight fade in the uniform. Like the last color, you don't really need to be too careful. And I'm just highlighting from the top and then hitting the butt cheeks and some other parts of the model. Time-wise, I think it took me about an hour to do all the airbrushing, all the 250-ish infantry. The fatigue's done, it is time to move on to the next biggest color on the models. I wanted my death core to look like they were sent out into the battlefield with mass-produced equipment and not super fancy gear like my Vostroyans, so pretty much all the equipment is bare metal. When you need to outfit millions of clone soldiers for each tithe, there won't be time to paint their armor or weapons, you'll just give them whatever comes off the assembly line. 
You can use any dark silver or gunmetal for this step. I don't recommend using a silver that is too bright or too dark, otherwise the weathering won't really show up. I paint this color on the weapons, shoulder pad, helmet, gas mat bits, belt buckle, and the cylinder thing at the bottom of their backpack. Now the model is looking pretty dark so in the next step I'm going to introduce a lighter color. I'm actually choosing the lightest color on the face since it is the focal point and it'll make the model pop a little bit more. It wouldn't really make sense to have the boots or the gloves in this color since it'll naturally draw the eye away from the areas where we want people to look. I'm using a fairly bright khaki color that is close to white. This color is going on the gas mask, the blanket on the backpack, and the bandages on the shins. Adding this color to the legs really breaks up the uniform since the great coat is covering a lot of the model. Don't worry about this part being too bright since the weathering will tone it down and the face will pop a lot more than the uh, shin bandages. Now just some small details. I move on to the boots and gloves which are just painted black. Be careful about not getting this paint onto the hand armor. For the other colors, you can be a little bit more liberal since you'll cover them up, but now it's time to be a little bit more careful. You could also speed up this process by painting the gloves brown with the rest of the models, but I chose black because I just wanted a little bit more colors. The last step of the base coats is to paint the leather. I'm putting this on the backpack, straps, and the oxygen filter, and the oxygen filter box on the chest. Any medium or light brown will work for this. I recommend choosing something that gives good coverage like the Peracro paints so you can get it finished as fast as possible. So the base coating is obviously the most tedious process of painting an army of this scale, so I ended up breaking it up a little bit so I don't go insane. Actually I, I might already be because I chose to paint 300 death core. But for the first couple squads, I batch painted each color. So on the first squad, I took 10 guys and it took about an hour to get all the base coats down and eventually I got the process down to about 30 minutes per squad. After the first platoon or so, I got to the point where painting these guys was really just muscle memory and I didn't really have to think about what I was painting or look around to make sure I didn't miss any details. So I doubled the batch painting process up to painting 20 guardsmen at a time and when I got to the last 80 of them, I did them in two batches of 40. After all the base coats are done, I was feeling pretty good about myself, so I decided to go make myself a drink. Well, I'm not going to lie, I actually had a good many drinks up to this point, so I figured I would just make myself an extra special one. Drink time done, it is back to painting. I forgot to base coat a small part, but it really shouldn't take that much time. So I used gold to pick out all the Aquilas on the skull and the weapons. I actually thought this step would be quick, but it almost took three hours since I had to do the entire army at once. It's almost time for weathering but first I wanted to add some decals. Decals are usually my favorite step of painting since it adds a lot for very little effort but when you have to apply 500 tiny decals it's not that fun. I use an Aquila on the left shoulder pad and the regimental marking on the right shoulder pad. I chose for these guys to be part of the 269th regiment of the Death Corps. I really really wanted to cut off the two but I didn't have the patience to cut that many decals. If you need a tutorial on how to do the decals, check out my last video on painting my house Tyrannus Imperial Knights. One more thing before weathering. I wanted to add a little bit more dimension and texture to the uniform. I used a bone color to dry brush all the models. This step should only take 15 or 20 minutes for the entire army but it is well worth the effort since the uniforms take up so much of the model. Alright, now it's time for the fun part, weathering. I'm using streaking grime, which is just like liquid magic, and it's like Agrax Earthshade, but really a million times better. You can brush this on or shoot it through an airbrush after you thin it down. This is an enamel based paint, and you can thin it down using enamel thinner, turpentine, mineral spirits, or gamsol. Gamsol is the most expensive, but it's really the only non toxic option. Seriously, use gamsol and use a mask. Bob Ross died because he didn't use Gamsol. Spray this color on all over the model and don't worry about obscuring any details since the majority of this will be wiped off. Now that the shrieking grime is done, it's going to take some time to dry so it's break time. Go outside and exercise or something, most of you nerds really need this. 
This is one of the things that I like to do when I'm not painting. It's now a few hours later and it's shot o'clock and then back to painting. We're going to need to remove the majority of the shrieking grime and just leave it as a filter and a shade for the recesses. You can remove as much or as little as you want to taste. I'm using a makeup sponge to carefully wipe this off, but you can also use q-tips if you prefer. Now if you left your shrieking grime on for too long, you can dampen it with a sponge and gamsol to help get it off. Now that the boys are looking suitably grimdark, I fix up the broken models and it's time to admire all of your work. Well, let me stand mine up first. And there you go, you could actually stop here and just do the basing, but I'm going to add one more thing. So the armor and the metal is the biggest point of interest after the fatigues and it's also the bright, one of the brighter colors. So I'm going to be using silver to add some fresh scratches and highlights to just break them up a little bit. I'm not trying to be too uniform with this, so I'm just dabbing and rubbing this color on. I don't really know how to explain the technique, but it's not really a dry brush and it's not quite stippling, something in between. You'll want to be as random as possible while focusing the silver onto the edges and high points of the model. All right, now basing time. This step really completes the models and makes everything look like a real cohesive army. Most people just put glue on the bases and then dip it in sand and then paint the sand and highlight the sand, but that's like four steps, so I'm going to simplify it as much as possible. I really like the Citadel Sterling Mud, but at $8 US, is that's just daylight robbery. I made my own mixture for one one thousandth of the cost and painted this on the models. The rocks are crushed up slate, which helps add some interest to the bases. This step always takes me longer than expected, but the end result is very worth it. When you're done, all the Krieg will now look like they're fighting in World War I Europe, and you can really just keep it this way if you like the muddy trench bases. My entire Imperial Army is based the same, so I'll have to do two more steps to get them done. I like to use pigments on my bases to make them look a little bit more natural. You could, alternatively, you could also just dry brush a highlight on the dirt, but then it makes the dirt look like painted dirt rather than natural ground. When I do the pigment method, I choose two or three colors so the ground has some more variation. I'm using a small makeup brush and lightly tapping the lighter colored pigment onto the bases. If you get some on the legs or the bottom of the great coat, that's good. Uh, it'll actually help really sell the effect. Next, I do the same with the darker color. I put a little bit more of this in the last color, maybe like two thirds of the darker one and one third of the lighter one, but the ratio really isn't that important. Same thing as before, I'm just tapping this on. After you have both colors done, use the same brush and blend it all together. Make sure you get some on the feet and a little bit on the great coat. You have to be a little bit careful though because you don't want any of this dirt to get on the top half of the model, otherwise it'll end up looking really weird. So now we need to lock the pigments onto the model and for this I'm using Gamsol. It's just loaded up into a spray bottle. You could put it down with a pipette but I find the spray bottle uses less Gamsol and it comes out a little bit thinner. Don't put too much and don't put too little. You don't want the pigments coming off now from the Gamsol or later from moving them around. All we have to do is give all of our boys a good rim job to finish them off. Painting this with the brush would take forever, so I'm just using black primer and shooting it through an airbrush. Uh, if you haven't done this before, practice this so you don't ruin your finished models and have to redo all of your hard work. Also, last thing, I forgot to show you how I painted the eye lenses, but I'll cover that one in the next video. And that's it, the infantry are all done, and it's time to move on to the tanks to finish the rest of the army. So I finished all 250-ish of my infantry and I actually beat my goal of 40 hours. I didn't really calculate exactly how long everything took, but I think I could have finished everything in about 30 hours if I wasn't filming everything. 
it is actually very very hard to paint models on camera it might look fast but i paint about twice as fast if i don't have to make sure that the model is in frame well anyways hopefully this tutorial helped you get your guardsman done faster and don't worry if you're not hitting the 10 minute goal per model that i set for myself i've been painting for 15 years and i do paint for at least 8 to 12 hours a day well anyways i'll be back with part two sometime soon hopefully okay bye